Good morning, everyone. I'm David. I'm a PM here at Google working on app ads. I really love having I.O. right here in our backyard. And it's not even just Google's backyard. It's actually kind of mine, because I've actually lived here in Mountain View for about 16 years. And so when I see those tall, white peaks of the Shoreline Amphitheater tent, it really kind of signals home to me whether I'm at a concert over there or landing at the San Jose airport, and I see it off in the distance, or enjoying a nice bike ride on the great trails that we have right around this amphitheater. And when I see that shoreline tent, the really iconic tent, especially in the weeks and months that are leading up to I.O., I get really excited about all the product announcements that we're planning to make here. And I also think for it, and probably more importantly, to all the great conversations that we get to have with you, engineers, developers, marketers, product leaders from all around the world. One of the big themes that's really been coming up in the conversations that I've been having is how mobile is changing everything, and particularly mobile apps. Uh, you know, I think back to when I first saw that Shoreline Amphitheater 16 years ago when I moved to Mountain View. The phone in my pocket didn't even have a data plan. Or even almost seven years ago when I joined Google here just down the street, I had just a few apps on my phone, and I was still doing most of my transactions on my laptop, even desktop. It's going to physical locations to do business. And if I think to the last year, or certainly two years, everything has completely changed. You know, I can't remember the last time I actually went to my bank or my insurance company, or even an ATM, you know, cashing checks on your phone. I, if I needed supplies, I just a few taps of my finger, and usually within the same day, they show up at my house. You need a ride, a couple taps, and a car shows up to take you to where you need to go. Or you know, I have young kids, and so their personal favorite is now the ability to, with just a tap or two, have a pizza show up at your door. They love that, uh, much sometimes to my dismay. Um, but it's you know, just so amazingly transformative to see this change that's happening around us. And you know, it's, it's happening so fast, and yet, you know, for my young kid's life, it's just all they've known. This is the world they, they live in, and they've just come to expect this kind of reality. And so it's, I think, easy to take that for granted, even though it's happening as it's happening so fast. And that's really why I love working on mobile apps and why I've chose to really focus on mobile apps here at Google. Mobile apps present such an opportunity for you to weave your products into people's daily lives and scale your businesses to millions or even billions, I'll say billions a lot today, of people faster than ever before. We actually announced yesterday, you know, to th if you think about the scale of this transformation, we announced yesterday that people have downloaded 82 billion apps from the Play Store last year. And the business opportunities are growing. We've also seen that the number of buyers in Google Play is growing by nearly 30% year over year. So the opportunity is just absolutely tremendous. And of course, you all get that. That's why you're here. But you know, since that opportunity is true for everyone, the question really becomes, how do you rise above the noise and get noticed? Building a successful business really takes more than just making an awesome app. That's really increasingly become kind of table stakes. You know, I even know this firsthand. When I started doing mobile development, it was on J2ME feature phones back in the day. And this is before there was app stores. There's no way to you know, do ads to market your apps to anybody. We got like 3,000 users and wasn't able to really go anywhere with the app. And even today, as the opportunities have grown, it's still, there's, the world is littered with so many apps that never really take off because they're not able to find users or make money. And a lot of that is because the competition has gotten so fierce. We've also measured that you know, there, the number of developers with over 1 million installs a month is growing by 35% year on year. So what this means is there's a lot more competition for people's attention their, and their dollars. And so you really have to find a way to stand out and while leaning on technology to deliver more of the results that you care about. This is where Google can really help you. We have over half a dozen properties that each have over a billion active users. And so really, Google has the power to, drive, to find your users with both simplicity and scale. So today, 
Belinda, Rob, and I are going to share strategies and innovations that help you find and keep more of your best app customers. Our presentation will answer these questions like, how do you grow your user base quickly? How do you find more of your best customers? How should you pay for them? And how to make sure that even after the install, you can keep those users coming back over and over to your app and actually really making a profit off your customers. I'll kick things off a little bit by talking about growth, which is you know, such an essential part of building a successful app. You obviously didn't put all that time and money into developing your app just to let it sit on the shelf. So how do you put your apps in the hands of more people quickly? Where and how can you reach them? For more and more of you, the answer is starting with Google. We recently shared that Google has helped developers and marketers just like you drive over 5 billion installs via ads to date for their mobile applications. And our products aim to place your app in the front of the right user at exactly the right time. A great example of how we can do this is with Google Play. So earlier this week, we also announced that Android now reaches 2 billion active users every month. And the Google Play Store is available in 190 countries really astounding scale. Obviously, Android users are turning to the Play Store when they want to find a great app or a great game. And in addition to sometimes going in and searching for an application, increasingly users are actually getting into the store, browsing around, and finding app recommendations surface to them and getting their apps as they're browsing in the Play Store. We've obviously noticed this trend. And so to make sure we're helping those users discover your apps while they're browsing, we this week introduced new ad placements on the home and list app listing pages in the Google Play Store. These new placements are exclusively available through our universal app campaigns, which I'll talk a bunch more on, and really help you find the users right when they're ready and willing to find your app. And of course, Google Play is just one of the many channels at Google where users are finding apps. They're finding apps when they're watching videos on YouTube, when they're checking emails, maybe when they're checking the news. And this is why we built a product we call Universal App Campaigns, which we affectionately call UAC, uh, to automatically reach the billions of users, whether they're in Google Play, they're on Google.com, watching videos in YouTube, checking mail in Gmail, or anywhere in the over 2 million sites and apps in the Google Display Network. UAC really can simplify how you reach your users when they're ready to install the app. For those of you who have tried this prior to UAC, you know that if you're trying to find users on, say, Google.com, you have to go in and figure out which keywords are your customers going to search for, what kinds of cost per click should you pay for those keywords. It's a very challenging process. And that's just for Google.com. If you want to extend that to, say, YouTube, you have to think about which audiences, which demographics may resonate with your app, and then show them those videos. If you want to run on the display network, you might be thinking about things like, what contexts matter for your users? Which apps, which sites should I be running on? It's very tedious and complex to do that across the board. And so you're either taking a lot of time, or you're missing out on a lot of opportunity. And so we decided with UAC, rather than man having to manage all these multiple campaigns and doing all this manual optimization across all the different channels and contexts, UAC will automatically do this for you with a single campaign that does all the heavy lifting. A big theme here at I.O., of course, is AI and machine learning. And there's no exception when it comes to ads. We've really extended this technology and brought it to ads. And that's the heart and soul of UAC that makes us able to, with a single campaign and with very easy settings, actually reach your users across the Google ecosystem. The, uh, the, the reason this works is because UAC is able to get smarter with every ad impression and see how your users are interacting with your ads and what's working and what's not. Like as an example, Maybe your ad is really resonating on travel videos on YouTube. So of course, then the system will make sure it's showing on more channels like that. Or maybe this new uh, play uh, ad is really working out for you. We'll skew budget to that. And so it automatically happens using data. 
It's using all these countless signals in real time to continuously refine your ads and make sure that you're reaching the right users at the right time in the right place. So my favorite examples of what UAC does is like figuring out automatically that users who have phones that have low battery life actually tend to not install that many apps, certainly not going to install like a really intense game. But they do install utilities, particularly like battery savers. And all the AI and machine learning models just figure this out automatically and make sure that the right users are then getting the right ads. Or learn things like weather apps are not that popular in places where the weather doesn't vary. So you know, in places like Mountain View, you might not see that many ads for weather apps from UAC, at least not this time of year with this kind of weather. Universal app campaigns are really making it easier for real companies like HBO to really get their shows like Game of Thrones, Veep, or my personal favorite, of course, Silicon Valley, in the hands of their customers using their HBO Now app. The, uh, their vice president of user acquisition, Diana Pesson here, is showing how she's seen that universal app campaigns make it so much easier for her and her team to reach the right customers, cutting the time it took to create these campaigns from upwards of two hours to down to just 15 minutes. And they're seeing great results at the same time. And obviously she, and I'm sure you, can think of better things to do with the hour and 45 minutes you save, whether it's building the next great feature in your app, or working on your business model, or just taking a bike ride, as I like to do right here around Shoreline. Universal app campaigns are really transforming the way developers and marketers are growing their apps. So with UAC, you can put Google's machine learning to work for you and deliver more trusted and valuable results for your business. But it doesn't just stop with the install. It's all about getting engaged users, driving value. And so now I'm going to turn it over to Belinda here to talk about how Google is helping you do that, driving engagement and value while making really profitable growth decisions. Thank you. Great. Awesome. Thanks so much, David. Hi, everyone. I'm Belinda, and I'm a PM here working on universal app campaigns and app ads. And while I haven't been in Mountain View as long as David has, I certainly have been working on app ads for quite a while. Um, and I remember even just a couple of years ago when we started this, most of you guys were asking me questions like, hey, how do I get my app installed? Right? How do I get my app on the home page of users? How do I become number one in the top charts? As David shared, finding new users is a critical part of growing a successful app. But growing that user base and getting the top charts, they're great. But it isn't the same thing as building a profitable business. I was doing office hours earlier today, and a bunch of you guys have been coming over, right? And again, the questions have changed so much over the years. And now the question is, well, how do I continue to grow my business, right? And what we've been talking about, right, with a lot of you, and feel free to come over later, too, is that you need more engaged customers to help you monetize. And you need to be smart about how you acquire these users and how much you pay for them. So I'm going to share a little bit more today about how Google is helping you achieve both of these goals. And by using the knowledge you already have about the great engaged users you've already built up, and how we can continue to find more of your best customers. So like we've been talking about, you want users not just to install the app, but to take additional steps to engage with the app that you and your team have worked so hard to build. You have so many cool features in your app, right? Don't let it just sit on the phone. You want people to take actions, like booking a room so they have a great weekend getaway or to slay a dragon and beat the next level in the really cool game that you built out, or even just placing a really great order for food right after this talk is over, because, well, we happen to be right before lunch. So that's why last year we introduced a new bidding option for universal app campaigns to help you move beyond the install and really focus and optimize for those in-app conversions, whatever that means for you and your business. And the goal is really still the same, right? We're still trying to find you users. We're trying to find you new users. But rather than focus on things like you know, what kinds of users might eventually end up in your app and do the right things, we want you to just focus on the actual events that the users are actually doing in your app, engaging with the features you built out. So the key thing for you to do then is to fill in this blank here. What actions do you want users to take after they install your app? Once you do that, right? once you decide that you want them to slay some dragons or that you want them to place a food order delivery, 
And you can then define those actions as conversions in AdWords. And Google actually evaluates all the unique signals that we have in real time, combined with your information, continuously refining your ads so that we show them and promote your app in the right place at the right price across all of Google's properties. And this has been working for app developers. So I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Pixonic, but they have this really cool game called War Robots. And it's a neat multiplayer robot game. And you really can't go wrong with robots, right? So by running UAC, they ran a number of campaigns optimizing for both new installs and in-app users. With this strategy, they were able to scale across 20 countries globally and do so with a 63% higher ROI. That is a lot of fighting robots. UAC is really transforming the way that developers, such as Pixonic and marketers, are requiring the right users. And it's also changing how they work with Google to promote their app. In fact, one in four app advertising dollars today are already being spent promoting in-app conversions since we launched this new bidding strategy in September. And I'm really happy to say that Google is helping developers such as yourselves drive over 3 billion events per quarter. 3 billion. That is more purchases made, more levels beat, more subscriptions, more people taking more actions, engaging with your app, and really growing to love the features that you have worked so hard to build. All those blood, sweat, and tears, all those late nights in the office are worth it. And we're hoping to accelerate the delivery um, of this to the, deliver, uh, to the developer community, such as yourselves, with even more enhanced bidding strategies than UAC that I'm going to go ahead and talk about and dive a little deeper into. So in order to make sure that you're being smart with your acquisition dollars, we're introducing two new bidding strategies in universal app campaigns, target CPA, cost per acquisition, and target ROAS return on ad spend. Simply put, these strategies let you pay more for users who are likely to spend more and pay less for users who are likely to spend less. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about them. So we'll start with target CPA, or target cost per acquisition. TCPA allows advertisers to define the amount that you want to pay for a user who is likely to install and perform a specific event. So for a game like Panda Pop here, there's a number of events that they care about, right? They care about people beating certain levels, complete tutorial. They want to make sure that people are saving baby pandas. And they also maybe want to promote some of the rainbow bubbles that they offer and get more people to buy those. So for Panda Pop, they could bid, for example, $10 for an in-app purchase, right, for people to buy more rainbow bubbles. Or maybe they'll bid $5 for a user who beats level one. Then universal app campaigns will take that information, bid automatically across all of the channels to acquire users who are likely to complete that certain action, whether it's beating level one or buying more rainbow bubbles. So for many of you, though, events and conversions don't tell the full story, right? It's great that someone buys some rainbow bubbles, but some users buy a lot of rainbow bubbles, and some buy a lot less. So, it's ultimately about the revenue right, that's generated from these users with your app. And that's why, in addition to just setting a target CPA, UAC advertisers will now be able to bid on target ROAS for each new app user acquired. Target ROAS bidding allows you to bid more for users who are even more valuable to you, to distinguish between users who only buy once and users who buy multiple times, between users who buy smaller purchases and between users who buy larger purchases. So I'll just give an example here. My brother and I, um, we really like playing Trivia Crack together. Uh, he lives over in DC, and I'm here in California. So it's a great way for us to sort of keep our sibling rivalry going. Um, we're really competitive. And I'm the older sister. Um, so I really want to make sure that I'm beating my brother. I can't let him win, right? So I definitely buy a few power-ups in Trivia Crack. My brother, however, has, um, is really busy, and he doesn't really want to deal with seeing ads too much. And so he has actually bought the ad-free version of Trigger Crack so that he can keep playing all the time. While we both made purchases within Trivia Crack, we have made different levels of purchases. 
And so we are actually valuable in different ways. And so Trivia Crack should pay perhaps a little bit more to acquire me, since I will keep buying more power-ups, while my brother is pretty much done. He's just not going to win anymore against me. Um, so Google is built to understand how valuable these users are based on how they engage, how they convert, and how they spend time within your app. And Google has a breadth of channels to find more users that you want to engage with your app at scale. So these options, target CPA and target ROAS, will be available later this year um, for both iOS and Android within UAC. And we're excited to see how you use them and how you get more users to engage with your app. But the shift to engage in engagement <laughs> and value makes real-time data and insights even more important than ever. Your first-party data is informing the decisions that you're making to grow your business, to decide which new feature to build out, which features to invest in more, where are people really growing to love your app. And this becomes even more difficult, though, as you have more touch points to think about and more customers to keep point track of. And so Google has been helping with Google Analytics for Firebase, which is a free tool that allows you to track your users real time and what they're doing within your app. We also realize, though, that many of you have other measurement partners that you're using. And so we want to make sure that you have, and we're committed to, support an open ecosystem of partners that work well with our media. So we're really happy to say that we have been working with seven app attribution partners to make measurement more consistent and reliable for our app advertisers such as yourselves. Additionally, we also wanted to make sure that we streamlined the process and the setup flow for getting your data from these app attribution partners into AdWords. So right now, if you want to get your data integrated, it's really easy to do, and you'll be able to do that more quickly and smoothly than ever before. With easier access to this data, you can now make quicker and smarter growth decisions and really focus on your app and improving it and growing even more. And by combining this data with universal app campaigns, you now have a trusted way to combine the insights that you know and all the work that you've done to the power of Google's machine learning. And this has been making a huge difference in our customers' bottom lines. Stash Invest is a leading investment app, and they were an early beta tester of the App Attribution Partners API. They use the newly available granular data with their ad campaigns and Google's machine learning to find more users who are likely to register and install and open an account. And this led to an 18% increase in post-install conversion rates. So now we've covered how to grow your app, how to find more valuable users, how to get more people to engage with all the features that you've built out. But even if you get the right users to install that app, take that action. You want to make sure you have a strategy for continually driving re-engagement in your app over time. It's not just that first purchase, but all the other subsequent purchases. So I'm going to go ahead and hand the baton over to Rob to tell you more about how you can build a successful app business by keeping users coming back time and time again. Thanks. Thanks, Melinda. Hi, everyone. I'm Rob, and I'm a product manager here at Google working on our app engagement products. As Belinda mentioned, I'm going to share how Google is innovating in many ways to keep users engaged in your app. Naturally, we spend a lot of time working on the experience in our app. We want to make sure our apps are the best. This is somewhat obvious. The question is, how do we delight users when they are outside of our app? I think this is best illustrated with an example. Imagine you have the same business you have now, or the same app. But imagine you also have a brick and mortar store with a big window. Now ask yourself, what should you showcase in that window so that when someone is walking by, they stop and take a look? What would you show to make them not only take a look, but come in and make a purchase? How would that change for every single user? This is a simplified example, but the general philosophy can make a big difference in how you re-engage your users. 
Getting users to come to, back to your app is all about connecting those users with the products that you provide that they care about and love. Whether it's power-ups in a game, deals on a hotel, or the latest line of sneakers. And doing this well requires a customized message and a personalized touch. You need to understand how, inter how users interact with your business and what um, items in your catalog they prefer, as well as what actions they take in order to make a purchase. Take e-commerce platform Jet, for example. The Jet mobile app gives users an easy way to browse products, view prices, and purchase items with a tap of a finger. Let's look at the way Lauren Picasso, director of marketing at Jet, thinks about reengaging users. She says, we're always looking for delightful and relevant ways to reach our customers and bring them back to engage in our app. The marketing implications of all of this is you want to have insights about your customers. And you want to be able to reach them in a timely manner with personalized messages that compel them to act. And you want to do this for all of your great products and services that your users care about at scale. Google is helping you get more users back into your apps with innovations in our re-engagement solutions. I'm happy to announce that AdWords advertisers can soon extend their dynamic remarketing campaigns to re-engage their app users with relevant ads as they browse over 2 million websites and apps on our Google Display Network. Let's imagine a hypothetical example with Sam. Sam wants to go to New York for the weekend. She's looking at flights while in line at a coffee shop. She doesn't finish the purchase because the coffee, her latte gets ready. But with app dynamic remarketing, you can reach Sam with a relevant and timely message to remind her to book the trip. This is a great experience for Sam, and this is great for your business, because now she is booking that flight inside of your app. The feed-based nature of these ads mean that they're perfect for businesses that have a large catalog of products, um, whether that's running shoes, hotel deals, or flight deals. Wish is a retail app that makes shopping fun. Wish is part of our app dynamic remarketing beta, and they were impressed with the high engagement and relevance of the ads that were offered. According to Peter, who's the co-founder and CEO of Wish, these ads helped stretch his team's budget further. He says, being able to show customized ads to our users based on past interests helps us make the most of every cent we invest. But it's not just relevance of ads that we're going for and ad engagement. It's really about business impact. Make My Trip is a popular flight booking service based in India. People come to their site and their app to access great, mobile or great travel deals. Make My Trip also took part in our beta. And our results start suggest that dynamic remarketing ads really worked well for their app. Google's app dynamic remarketing ads saw, saw send Sorry. Saw so five times higher conversions. These are the actions that drive Make My Trips business, um, especially in a mobile first market like India. We are encouraged with the results of our beta. And over the coming months, we will be rolling out these innovations to AdWords advertisers globally. But driving engagement you want from your apps goes beyond just reaching the right users with the right message. It requires delivering a frictionless user experience, no matter where the user is accessing your app. As part of our appification of our ads, we will soon be making it easier for people to take actions in your app from Google mobile search ads. We'll providing new in we will be providing new innovations for companies that use app links in their Android ads to deep link users to relevant content. Um, and for ads, we'll make this work for all versions of Android, not just Android, Marsh, or not just um, Marshmallow and forward. In another hypothetical example, a Wish user, Tom, would be able to click on a search ad on Google.com and go back to the um, page in the Wish app that they were um, looking at buying something 
And because their information is already there, all of their preferences are there, he has a very easy time to make that conversion um, and drive additional value for your business. With re-engagement ads, we'll be able to find users and bring them back to your app. We'll be able to drive additional value beyond just the install um, and make sure that you get the most out of the users that have your app. In closing, we've come a long ways from the days of interacting with brands solely in real-world environments. Today, we have the opportunity to engage with our users um, across the world just from the palm of their hands. And we have relationships that span years instead of days or months. You have a mass massive opportunity to reach more customers and drive more revenue and value through your mobile app. And building successful apps that support your business doesn't have to be hard work anymore. We want to make it easier for you to bring your unique app data and our intent signals and context knowledge in a way that lets you delight your customers and find them at the right time. The good news is not only do we have access to more customer signals and data than ever, we have the most critical piece, and that is the ability to use all of this data. Machine learning and Google's innovative products like Universal App Campaigns and our re-engagement solutions allow us to bring the right message to the right user at the right time. And this makes it easy to get them to where they want to go, and that's into your apps to make purchases. So app technology is really becoming the enabler that it was promised to be, and not just another channel that you have to figure out. We look forward to seeing how you can take advantage of all of our recent innovations to connect to more of your users and drive more value from your mobile apps. On behalf of Belinda and David and myself, I'd like to thank you for your time. Um, and we'll now open it up to questions.